Hey YouTube, Chris with RC Worst here. Welcome back to another great video. Today we're going to be talking to you about seven great tips for a residential well system owner. So we just wanted to put these tips out there, focusing on some less common tips that are gonna make life a whole lot easier along the process of ownership. So let's get started. All right, so for tip number one, you'll need your Sharpie. This is a, an extremely important tip because it's gonna save you a lot of headache uh, as the years go by and uh, the information uh, fades from existence. I, I know that uh, when you have somebody come out and put this equipment in, uh, you're like, oh yeah, I'll remember where that's at, I'll remember all this, and, and you won't. Uh, well, most people won't, I don't. Anyway, so uh, the first tip is uh, when it comes to your control box relating to your well pump system, and I understand that not every well system has a control box, um, but you'll have to make do with either your breaker panel or uh, some other area that's near uh, this type of equipment. Maybe your pressure tank would be a good place for this information. Anyways, so the idea is with your control box, Take uh, a Sharpie and write your model number for your pump, the, um, the depth that your pump was set at, uh, the date of installation, all of that relevant information because when it's down in the well, it's not really easy to pull it out and look at it. Um, and it's really easy after five, 10 years go by or the house sells or you buy a new house um, and that information gets lost. So um, put it on the control box and then the installer knows where it's at, you know where it's at. So if you give us a call and we say, well, what model do you have or anything like that? There's never a question. It's super simple and easy tip to use. Tip one continued. You got your amp meter. We've got our handy dandy $18 amp meter that we featured in a number of troubleshooting videos just to show that things can be done with a cheap meter. And this is a perfect example. Uh, in addition to writing the model information, put the amp uh, information on here. So what you would want to do in that instance is take an amp reading as the pump is filling the pressure tank. So go open a valve or something somewhere when the pump kicks on, go take an amp reading and document it. That way, uh, it, as the years go by, you'll have that as a reference, whether the amperage is increased, decreased, and that's gonna give you an idea uh, if you've got a problem. Also, if you don't know how to test amperage or you don't feel comfortable doing that, again, it is live electricity, so be safe out there. Uh, just ask your installer to go ahead and take those readings for you, possibly show you how to do it, uh, and then you can put those on the box. All right, heater kicked on but that isn't gonna stop me. Tip number two, here we go. So uh, tip number two, I've got my handy dandy owner's manual. Never wanna lose that. Uh, and what I recommend you do with all documentation relating to your pump, motor, control box, receipts even, uh, basically everything. And if you like to keep your receipts separate elsewhere, make a copy and put it in here, then you got it. Um, so you take all your information, throw it in like a gallon Ziploc bag. Sometimes bags are confusing and hard to use. Uh, this is one of those times. But anyways, you take that Ziploc bag and you mount it. I don't have a lot of free wall space here, but in your house, you probably don't have all this junk. Um, so you mount it up to the wall somewhere, you know, screw a piece of tape, whatever. Uh, then all of your documentation, literature, everything is handy, easily accessible by you and anyone that's servicing your system. And anytime you can save time for the person servicing your system, you're saving yourself money. So on to tip number three. Here we are, tip number three, and I have here a pressure switch. I'm sure you know what that is, and if you don't, you should. Anyways, uh, so we've got a pressure switch here, and I've go, I went ahead and wrote on it. So I have written on this side, 4060. That is when the pump turns on and off. Good information to know, that way you can go check your pressure gauge or anything like that and know whether or not your pump system is operating normally. Obviously this number can change depending on your system, so adjust accordingly. Uh, I went ahead on the top of this, and this is probably one of those arts and crafts situations that you can get creative on and do your own thing, but this is an example. Uh, so this is a pressure switch, obviously there's four dots on top of here, arrow, 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 and that corresponds with what's inside the switch. We have four terminals here. I often get asked, how do I wire a pressure switch? In order to make sure that you put your wires back the way they were originally, just to make life simple and easy, um, these dots correspond with that. So you may have your incoming power terminals and outgoing power terminals, and just makes it nice and simple for you. Another thing you can do, if you don't like the drawing or it's too confusing, um, like I said, get creative. You could use some tape uh, and tape each one of your wires, put a number on it, and then write your numbers on here. Or um, really, there's a lot of different directions you could go. But anyways, on to tip number four. All right, here we are with tip number four. We have our pressure tank. Uh, yours might be bigger, might be smaller, doesn't really matter. Um, it's not uh, really the size in this situation, it's how you use it. So we have our pressure tank and our Schrader valve 
uh, pressure checker thingy. So I would recommend you check the pressure on your tank at least once a year, um, if not more often, but once a year is probably a good middle ground. Anyways, um, you need to check that pressure tank. Now this one is about 38 PSI. Now rule of thumb, of course, is you want your pressure tank to be two to three PSI below your cut in pressure. Well, uh, on our pressure switch, we know it's 4060. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my Sharpie because I'm marking things up today. And I'm gonna write 4060 on the tank, just like I have here. And then in addition to that, so this is gonna be my pump setting or pressure switch setting, however you wanna word it so that you can remember. Um, and then what I'm also gonna do is uh, set PSI 38. So that reminds me five years from now when I'm old and forgetful that uh, I need 38 PSI in the tank. Um, so just a, a nice tip, keep that in mind, check the pressure every now and again, keep the pressure at the appropriate setting, write it on there so you don't forget. On to tip number five. All right, here we are with tip number five. What we're actually talking about here is, I'm not gonna show you anything, but it is uh, more about uh, gener general knowledge. So be proactive with the ownership of your system. Ask questions, understand how it works. Uh, try to learn about the individual components, what they do and how they work, because all of that stuff is gonna help you to save money in the long run when you know what's going wrong. In addition to that, when you have installers or individuals come out that maybe you're not familiar with or uh, are not as trustworthy, you can kind of hold them accountable because you know what's going on. Of course, it goes without mentioning that RC Worst is always standing by to answer your calls and questions relating to any situation that you encounter that's questionable with your well. So with that, let's move on to tip number six. Tip number six, know where your pump breaker's at. Here, pump breaker, where are you? Oh, here you are. Don't forget that. All right, so tip number seven, know what's in your water. You don't want to be drinking something that's going to kill you. That's not cool. Uh, also, RC Worst actually sells water test kits. In case you don't want to pay for an expensive one, this is a good buffer to give you an idea if you've got something to be concerned about. I recommend testing your water at least once a year. More if you've had potential contamination before. And in case you're wondering, the water safe test kits test for bacteria, pesticides, nitrates, lead, iron, nitrites, hardness, pH, chlorine, and copper. So get one today. All right, guys, so that's our video. Thanks for joining us. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more great content from us here at RC Worst. As always, our agents are standing by to take your call anytime you have any questions or concerns. If you have any comments, you know where to put those. Have a great day.